Welcome to Low Town. I'm Nate, and today I'm going to walk you through how to use our brand new rustic wood floral pieces. Let's dive in. So the floral consists of these two pieces. Uh, first, we have this rustic wood uh, curved cutout portal floor, which is a mouthful for saying basically it is a four by four floor with a cutout circle in it. Uh, it is the same height as our regular floors, uh, it is four inches on each back side, just under two inches on these two sides. Uh, and then we have this curved cutout, uh, which makes a roughly a two inch radius, four inch diameter circle. Uh, it has a biscuit slot in the center of the curved cutout, as well as biscuit slots uh, centered on every two inches around the per perimeter. We're going to have city builder uh, corner post peg holes in these three corners. Uh, the bottom will have three anchor magnets, boop, 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 there. Uh, important to note, these are handmade prototypes. Uh, the final version will be factory finished bottom uh, in dungeon gray with those embedded anchor magnets. It lines up with our uh, existing floors, so you could use it to transition from right two inch floors to four inch floors, such, uh, and it plays plays really well with with the floors, with the walls. You can build on it like a regular floor with the corner post holes, uh, and it plays very well in multiples uh, with other of the uh, the floral floors. The other piece. The companion piece is this curved railing. Uh, so this is uh, looks the same style as our regular railing pieces from the, um, the scaffolding set, uh, but it is on the curve. It has in the profile, you can see there's a little uh, cutout here, and it has a baked in half biscuit. Uh, that allows it to attach snugly to the front of this floor, like such. Uh, and you can invert it if you want. Uh, go something like that. Uh, it also has a pull accessory hole on the top so you can accessorize it. So you could put like the hoist accessory up there or whatever you desire. And you can also slide on the uh, pull accessory holder from the railing set too if you want to have more pull accessories on there. So in use uh, alone, this thing can do a couple of things. So we showed you can sort of line up with floors uh, if you wanted to build like a little standalone platform for your town square or something, you could pop the curve railing on there and take the four inch railings, uh, put those on the back around the perimeter, all, all inverted, uh, put a two inch railing here. Oh, this guy popped up. These are handmade prototypes, so they're not fully fixed. They don't have all their pegs just yet. You could seal it off with another two inch railing like that. Or if you want, you could put the 38 millimeter stairs, pop those in there. And now you have a little standalone platform you could use in the town square for the town crier, put a gallows on there, whatever. It's got a little more style than just a plain uh, square platform. Uh, you could also put a couple of these together and make a half curve thing, make it like the, uh, the fishmonger's market or something interesting, uh, fancy high-end market. All right, pop the railings off. Take a 25 millimeter cobblestone riser, pop that under there, uh, and then you could use this. You could freestand this into, uh, put it in the corner of like your tavern and have it be a stage for your performers. Uh, speaking of taverns, this is also fantastic if you want to make a, uh, a fancy balcony or a mezzanine for your tavern. So you can uh, invert the railing, put it back in the upright position, pop some corner posts into the uh, the city builder or corner post holes, and then we'll slot a, a couple of walls in here. Now we'll take this thing. Let's take a little. So if we had a little second story mezzanine build something like this, you could pop this in uh, and slide it up against that. You could biscuit those together for security so you could lift that whole second story off as one unit if you want. The railings go nice continuously across. Uh, you could pop a uh, one of the narrow railings at the end to terminate it if you wanted to, or you could uh, extend it if you wanted to continue your mezzanine level up. You could extend it with a two by four floor or a uh, a two by two floor like this. Continue the railings out and put some walls over there. Uh, so there's a lot of there's I'm sure there's other more more building things you will discover with it, but it's it's a surprisingly versatile piece. It's nice to have a little introduce a curve in the otherwise very square system. Also for other inspiration. 
uh, you take a look. We have used this in the uh, Elvin Trading Post walkthrough video. You can see it as an exterior uh, dock. We've used it in the Into the Pit walkthrough video, where you can see it as a fighting pit as the centerpiece of that uh, tavern. Uh, and we've used it in the hands-on demo of the Double High uh, system, where you can see it as a uh, interesting four-inch deep mezzanine in a uh, library slash tavern. So check out, there's links to those videos in the description below. Now let's see it in a build and play with the light puck. All right, so this is a sample build to show off some of the ways we can use the floral. Uh, it's a 12 by 12 footprint, uh, basically it's sort of a interior in or building of interest. Uh, on the ground level here, uh, we have four of the floral floor and railing combos put together to create a circle. It's a really great spot for a centerpiece. Uh, and then up here on the uh, raised area in the mezzanine, uh, we have a pair um, flanking this two by four floor to make a neat kind of elegant curved mezzanine area, like a really nice, uh, a nice balcony for your high end uh, tavern. So now let's see what we can do, what we can go buy in this floor to with, because it really shines when you start uh, playing with other pieces. So to start, we have on the base of this uh, the circle here, we have the included texture patch, right? The packed earth texture patch, uh, which makes a perfect spot for a fighting pit like we did in Into the Pit. Uh, but you can change the uh, the feel of the room by swapping out what's in there. So this will be a, this is the bottomless pit texture patch. This is just a piece of paper. The final texture patches will be on neoprene with a backing feel. They're nice, but if you just pop that in there now, it is like a, a bottomless pit or perhaps a 60-foot uh, a shaft down into uh, Under Mountain or some such. If you want, you could pop a, a terrain tray in there. This is a 6x6 six six Raging River terrain tray from Wildlands with the uh, water texture overlay on it. So we can slide that in there. Uh, and now it's swirling water with some nice uh, speculars. If you want to make it a little more turbulent, we can take this is the... Uh, hazard overlay whirlpool. Let's slide that over. Uh, and now let's see. Swirling maelstrom that feels like it goes down forever. Uh, we could take this is our one of our uh, 8 by 8 Phantasmal filters, the Eerie Emanations. You could pop that on there. There. And now it's a pool of magical light or acid. Uh, you could build this whole thing on top of uh, the light panel and then use this as a cool glowing Thing for all sorts of neat effects. Uh, but fundamentally, you pop anything in there and it changes the look and the feel and the story around what's in the floor here. Uh, to further that, we have uh, three new Phantasmal filters that we're offering in Lowtown. So we have this dank water, uh, which is dark old water you can put in there. Now it has a uh, right little questionable well. It could be just a well or it could be a magical pool or who knows what. Uh, this, so uh, we know what, this is our blood swirl. You could put that in there, uh, if you want to make it menacing. All right, now it's a very, now this room has taken a sinister turn. Uh, or we could, uh, we could make it a little more magical and put this Thaumaturge's circle in there. And now it's a, uh, a summoning spot or not. And that goes on and on. You can put any, you can print your own stuff out, or use any train trays, texture patches, and like to uh, give it some a different look and feel. Now let's look at uh, adding some pieces to the floor tool. So in general, it makes a really good uh, spot for any sort of focal point. Right? So you could, for instance, put this quildron tree in here from Wildlands. Right? They could have built this building around a tree. Uh, a variety of our trees fit in here, the regal rowan, uh, a number of the stump lumps, both small and large, fit in here, so you can use any of your modular trees. You can also put rocks or crystals or the like. So any sort of natural element, you could pop something in there, and it looks great on that packed earth. You could also use it for uh, some sort of man-made centerpiece, like this is the furnace portal from our reliquaries collection, so this could be like now a mad scientist's slayer, or maybe they've discovered this thing and they built a protective barricade around it while they're uh, studying it. Or the like. Uh, you could also put the toppers uh, from the Oracle Pool for the light puck uh, from their canned ruins in there. So you could make this a 
it doesn't quite fit with the prototypes. It'll fit with the factory finished ones. Uh, so you can put a swirling pool of water in there with the like. Now, if you wanted to pop this off, let's pull the railing out and see. If you pull off the railings, now we have just a small step down, nice decorative circle. You can do the same gags, right? You can use any of the other bits you put in there. Now, without the uh, railing around it, a little more inaccessible. That might be even better for something like the furnace portal if you're actually actively using it. Um, but it also opens up, you now have a four inch diameter hole here, so you could put uh, our cages in there, our curved cages would fit. You make a really neat uh, holding pen in the center of this, uh, this hole. And the packed earth, once again, works really well for that. Uh, you could put in the uh, circular Archaean uh, dais, if you want to pop that in there. And then that makes a really nice platform for any sort of visual MacGuffin. Uh, like this is the uh, serpent crystal from our illuminated LED floor pack. Uh, you could pop out the lid on this, and then you could have, depending on what negative space in there, you could have the, the bottomless pit in there, or the swirling pool of blood. Oh, we got to see that. Let's, let's try it. I can't just say it, not show. We got to see this. Um, yeah, swirling pool of blood in there. That is definitely noteworthy. You could also take the uh, oracle pool and uh, pop that on top of this, and then use uh, use this to pop, put the light puck in. And we'll show the light puck in the uh, the next segment. Uh, and here's a really here's a wild one. You could I don't know necessarily why you would, but you could build our small towers from the castle fit in there four inch diameter let's get the door facing front right i don't know why we got a door in the second story here uh you can also if you want to uh, if you want to elevate things and get really wild we can take the same tower let's let's get this part i want to lift these guys are biscuited together i'm gonna we're gonna pop the tower down we have uh, our arrow slits up here on the uh, second story, and those arrow slits project enough that they hold the uh, hold the floral in place, and then you could build uh, you could build your castle up from there, uh, and then you could you could put railings around this and use it as a lookout platform or something. It would probably work better on a much taller tower, but you get the idea. So there are a ton of building possibilities with this floral. Lots of fun ways you can use this thing. Let's uh, let's look at what happens if we add the light puck. Let's get moody. All right, now let's introduce some special effects using our light puck, which is available in the Pledge Manager. So we turn this thing on, and we have a whole bunch of addressable LEDs in there and some cool programs. So we can pop that thing in. Uh, the final factory finished versions will be a little tighter right now. Uh, it's a little too tight of a fit, so we're displaying a little bit of really nice and clean the factory finished floral. So once we have the uh, light puck in there, we can pop, let's try one of our new Phantasmal filters, we use the dank water, throw it on there, and voila, you have a, uh, a glowing pool. You can do some fun effects with it. Just right there with just the light puck and that filter, it's already pretty neat. If you want to, um, if you want to sort of give a little more separation between the LEDs and the topper, you can pop the uh, swirling water topper on there, and then put the uh, put the filter on, and that may, that softens everything up a little bit more, so it's even harder to see where the individual LEDs are. It feels a little more organic, uh, and you can really you can change the color of this water by changing the color of the uh, the programs. You know, a lot of fun, nice options there. Right? A variety of magical waters can create. You could also, if you want, you can flip to flip it and do um, put the put the filter in first and then put the uh, the topper on so you have a little bit of texture underneath it. Gives an alternate effect. Basically you can kind of just sort of mix and match uh, until you find a combination that helps tell the story that you're interested in telling. Uh, so then let's put let's see what the uh, what the blood brings to the table. All right, so we're gonna take the uh, I guess topper off. Cool. 
I'm going to take the uh, swirling blood, um, pop that on directly. We can definitely see the LEDs a little bit through there, which kind of breaks the uh, breaks the illusion a little bit. So if we're feeling like that, let's try changing. Let's put swirling water on top. And then the blood, now you can really get the texture of the blood. And what's fun with this thing is you can change the uh, the color of the blood really changes based on what light you have underneath it. And I'd say it can be orangish, you can make it bluish. The filters uh, take on the characteristic of whatever uh, whatever light is coming through them. And once again, you can pop this one underneath for some texture. And then put the uh, put this one the water on top, and let's do the last one, the thaumaturgist circle. So this one, I have to line it up. All right, so we're gonna put the thaumaturge circle on there. Let's hopefully this lines up. So this is a uh, this is a brand new light show that Miles just put together. Uh, we're gonna design several light shows for uh, Low Town and for these new phantasmal filters. So the idea here is. Uh, when you start it up, the uh, the, the uh, circle just starts to have a little pulse rate, just glows to life, just a little bit of little bit of life there. So as the players deliberate, trying to figure out what to do, you can sit there. So first button will uh, kind of put it into a more active state. So the glow gets brighter, and now our zone's thing, and that it'll cycle through. Now there's a little more, a little more movement, a little more life. So you could have, you know, the bad guys doing a ritual and it's started or the players are trying to solve the puzzle and add things or they're doing the ritual or whatever. Let's say uh, they do something wrong uh, or maybe the uh, the bad guy is getting further along the ritual and things are getting more frenetic. You can hit the, uh, the last button and it gets into sort of random uh, flashing mode so it gets uh, feels like things are getting a little more dramatic. Uh, if you hit that same button again, it can then power down. So you either stop the ritual or it finished or whatever it went off and you flipped over. Or if we're back on, we're no pulsing, we're in our middle state, and then you have the uh, solve button, if you press that, it glows and has this really satisfying little point of light glow. At that point, you can have this sort of culmination, right? Maybe it summons the uh, the big phoenix, something that opens the portal or does whatever. So the fun example of some of the narrative potential of these fantastical filters with the light puck all encased in the floor. You could also, if you wanted, you could you could pop the railings out and use the um, Oracle pool, put that over, put the Codex vault over it and float that in the floor too, if you wanted. Um, or we can actually invert these and lift this whole thing up. So let's look at that next. So now we've uh, inverted the railings. So these the four railings are on the inverted position. And we've lifted this whole build up on uh, the 2x2 two two cobblestone risers and some of the 25 millimeter cobblestone risers. So everything's lifted an inch, uh, so this will touch the ground. We've put the uh, bottomless abyss uh, texture patch in there so it looks like it goes down forever. So now we've taken this sort of contained pit. Now it feels like sort of a bottomless pit, right? This is a sort of shaft you would kick someone down. This is a Sparta situation or... Maybe it's descending down into the mysterious depths or whatnot. Uh, similar to with the railings in the, the upward position, you can change the look a lot by dropping in uh, some different negative space. So you could put in water or dirt like we did before, or you could put in their new pool of blood and tassel filter. Now that is just like a menacing sight, right? What is it? Why is there a uh, this pool of blood here? What does it mean? Uh, you could put the dank water in there. Now it looks like a, uh, just like an old well, or maybe it's some magical liquid, or what the heck is it? Uh, we could take the thaumaturge circle, put it down there. Um, and now it's a nexus of ley lines, or uh, maybe it's a magic circle, maybe it's somewhere a containment thing to hold a, a demon or a captive or something like. Uh, we could take something like the, uh, this is the swirling sticks phantasmal filter. Uh, we could pop that in there. They have a swirling maelstrom that goes down forever. Uh, also, similar to in the, the upward position, we can use this. Uh, we can change this out. Uh, we can. It's a really good spot for any sort of piece of 
uh, terrain or MacGuffin that we want to add in there. So you could do something like take the vile mushrooms right, and pepper out a bunch of vile mushrooms in there. And now someone is growing some sort of dangerous uh, poisonous plants, right? It, an apothecary or alchemist is uh, harvesting these, these terribly poisonous mushrooms, infectious mushrooms. Or maybe you want to get kind of sarlacc pity and we put the uh, the sorrow nest in there and a couple of sarnus bulb pods. And now it's just like a, a terrible beast pit. You definitely don't want to fall in there, especially on that uh, the pool of blood that looks really uh, menacing and pretty scary. Maybe we could do something a little more benign and magical. We'll put the, uh, put the dank water in there and then we'll take the heart shard from Cameron's Deep. We can put that in there. Now it's sort of a magical crystal formation. It feels like this this was built around the natural formation. Or you could put, we could take, this is the swirling water from the Oracle pool. We could pop that in there. It's a little bit of a tight fit right now with the prototypes. The factory finish uh, ones will fit nice and smooth for that. So now we have some nice texture in that pool. So lots of, uh, lots of options by inverting it and it makes everything sort of feel a little more menacing. It's sunken down and could kind of go forever. Fun way to do portals and like. And of course, we can also put the light puck in here. So let's uh, let's dim the lights and take a look at the light puck. All right. So now we have uh, we've dimmed the lights and we've dropped the light puck down into our uh, floral pit there, and it is a, a canvas we're waiting for some fun toppers. So just like we did when it was above, we can put any of our intasal filters on there, like the dank water. And just make like a neat little uh, glowing pool or some such. If you want, you could, uh, we could put the uh, swirling water on top of it like that to uh, give it some further texture. Make it look like a really neat magical pool. Uh, and you can also reverse the order if you'd like. You can put this down first and then your top rover if you want to see more of the graphic and uh, obscure the uh, LEDs even more do kind of a neat effect. We could also, if we want to get even even more three-dimensional, we can put some sculpted pieces on there, right? So we could, uh, we could take, this is the fountain from our LED illuminated floor pack. We could put it on there for a magic fountain. Maybe we get, let's lower it down a little bit. We'll pop this thing out. Let's put the, uh, let's put the swirling sticks down there and then put this right on the swirling sticks. So again, the final pieces will be uh, fit together nice and tightly. So you can take something like the fountain, pop it on, give it a, and we've got a neat magic fountain sunken into the uh, floor. Uh, if we want to get a little more sinister, let's swap this out, put the uh, put the pool blood on there, right? Let's get into uh, let's get into blood mode, and then we can put the summoning circle from uh, a cavern's deep on there. I think, and then let's let's go in. Let's try some program. Right, this is definitely a place where uh, there's some dark magic afoot. And put your uh, villain in there. Have something fun going on. Oh. Looks super sinister. We could swap it out. Let's put. Uh, let's go with a little more benign magic. This out. Put our blood. Let's put in the uh, thaumaturgic circle, and let's go put the heart shard on there. And so now there's some magical crystals they've stumbled upon. They would put swirling and sticks. And if you want to, uh, you want to get a mini in there. Let's put, let's pop that off. Put some in there. Maybe there's a uh, Somebody is trapped after the bad guy is going to do a, a a ritual in there. Something like this. So no matter how you put it, if you if you put something sunken into the floor, it feels super integrated, uh, and it's just a wonderful focal point for whatever you know, whatever narrative bit you want to do. Uh, it would definitely draw your player's eyes, and there's a lot of neat interactive storytelling possibilities you can do using the floral, the light puck, and some of these fantastical filters. And that should give you an idea of some of the many applications for the Flortal. If you want more information, check out the links in the description below. And remember, the Pledge Manager opens on May 2nd, and we are accepting late pledges.
Thank you so much for watching. And now it's back to the anvil.